What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Tug of More. Welcome to just a conversation between two friends. That's right. Where we talk about where we are right now in our life today. But this like thing that's in us, this yeah. innate desire. It's knowing, driving us, pushing us, tugging us into more. Knowing that God has more for us. Yes. He has another step. And it's what we call the tug of more. That's right. And it's something that I live with every minute of my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Tugging I, into more. Tugging. <laughs> yes, I'm interrupting you today. Sorry, I'm just that's excited. That's okay. Yes, it's good. When he's excited because lots of things. Well, I'm also nervous because you have not told me the topic of the day. Oh, yeah. When he's on the topic, we're going to just do some intro stuff. That's though, right. Okay, go. Easton Barth, yes, our tug of more producer. That's true. Popped the question what? to his beautiful now fiance. Fiance, fiance. Here's a photo. <laughs> they went to an airplane. They flew on an airplane. That's right. Easton tricked her like a champ. She was surprised, which is crazy because I was like, she's gonna fake. That girl is like a what is it? A, a sleuth. A, yeah, I was gonna say like a dox dachshund that's not the right the a hound do dog a hound what is the hunting a super dog sleuth yeah i thought she yeah. would sniff and it so out easton tricked her yeah he uh took her to aaron's aaron winnie's husband also yeah. aka easton's dad yes is a also a pilot yes of so one of many things that aaron can do that's true so they flew her away and she just thought they were going on a fun opportunity to it, go on an airplane ride. And Aaron's really good at like talking about nothingness. Like, and so he's like telling her like, hey, look over here to your left and you'll see the Amazon plant. So we had this whole setup with like flowers and like a whole little runway of like where to walk and where he was gonna kneel. She didn't see any of it. We were all trying to hide. She didn't even notice any of it. She got out of the plane and was taking pictures of the sun. And like, he was like, hello, will you please come with me yeah. before she realized what was happening? <coughs> so it was the, pretty awesome. The best part is that she said yes. That is the best part. Really, all the other accoutrements <laughs> don't matter at all. No. I picked up the Chick-fil-A platters. That's true. So, Easton, Thank you. you're welcome. Thank you I'm for your help. I'm your marriage up for success. <laughs> Rachel unloaded our attic of yes. candles and vases. That's true. And for so the decor. So, Easton, congratulations. Yes. Get ready. Easton and Brady wedding coming. 2024. 2024. Yes, here we go. It's so exciting. So, that's good. Yeah. Uh, also, we're getting our building painted out front. And so that's been fun. Yeah. We all week have been walking out at different times to see if it's the right color. Did you know there are more than one white? <laughs> I did not know there was different whites. There are lots of shades and hues of white. So many whites. We're learning so much about colors and paint. So it looks good. Yeah. It's a little... Creamer, off-whiter. Got some milk. There you go. He needs some milk yeah. action. Not as white, but I think it still looks fresh and classy. classy. Yeah. It we looks talked good. about repainting it again. And that was going to cost too much. Nope. We ain't doing that. Already paid to get it painted once. We nope. got some little red accents. Of course we do. Yeah. We do not have a uh, a sign up there. Not yet. The Lord is going to provide all that we need in order to buy the greatest sign in the world. So that we found we need. a sign guy. They're legit. And so today me and Whitney and Enrique went and toured their Sign factory? Sign factory, studio place. And so the dude comes and he walks our building and we're talking all these ideas. And, you know, we're creative out the wazoo. Yeah. So we have all these ideas of things that we want to do, but then had to pull into like some practicality. Right. Well, okay. So in the lobby, the dude gave us a price. This is what I was going to say. The problem is he first gave us a ballpark. And if you don't actually know and confirm for sure what you know, like what you're about to say, don't don't give ballparks well, so if they're not a, correct. He gives a ballpark and the ballpark number that he hit us with was more than I had imagined a sign would cost. Already. Already it was more. Well, then today we go and he's got all the artwork and oh, yeah. yada yada and the backlighting and the this and the that. And then he shows us like an example of the sign and I'm yeah. already sold. I'm like, oh I'm yeah, sold. that's exactly what we need. And then I said, well, how much, dude? How much, bro? And so he hits me with the number. You know what he said? Double. D -d 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 Double. Double. Double the amount. His first well, estimate. Actually, so now, actually more than double. Double plus another seven yeah, grand. Yes. I'm like, come on, man. So what do we do? Maybe you G yay, right now. Yay. We have this great big building. That's <laughs> awesome. But do you know what you need with a great big building that's off the freeway? A mega sign. That's true. And so do you know how much mega signs cost? <laughs> mega money. <laughs> more. 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 <laughs> There's a tug Imagine of that. more. So, so if you are needing a tax write-off, we would love oh, to give you yeah, one. That's a great thing. If you would love a donation, maybe you and your business right now are saying, hey, we're trying to tug in some more and we need some tax relief this year because of all that we've already been blessed with because we've been listening to the tug of more and implementing all that they've been teaching. That's true. Then you could donate to our sign and we will give you a donation certification. Listen, <laughs> if one of our viewers wants to buy the sign, 
we will do an ad for you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, do you know how good we would be on a commercial? Yeah. We'll do an ad for you, or we'll let you put a sign on the other side of our there building. There you go. For That's, a year. We told the sign people they could do that. Oh, well, so the sign guy is there, and so they got the sales guy, and then he had this other dude with him who was like sign guy in training. Yeah, that's what I think. He's kind of a... Yeah, he was fine. You know. But then afterwards, they bring out the big boss the man. The problem was his handshake. You no, knew that the whole he, thing. You his, knew that he was not a confident like part of the equation with the way he was like, hello. He did not shake my hand with confidence. No, it was rough for, this, for the other guy. Yeah. I well, so then him. at the end, they bring out the big boss man. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad started the company. Now he has two sons, and this is the one son. The general manager. And this cat is 6'8". Yeah, he was he was tall. We didn't and he's about. big, too. Yeah. You know he'd been eating Big Macs. <laughs> he's a big old boy. Don't uh, offend him if he listens. Maybe no, he's, he's going to be a not, listener. I'm not saying he's, like, fat. Oh, I'm saying, okay. like, this dude is, like... Yeah, I was like, he was a this big dude. This dude can, like, pick up some hay bales. That's right. That's what he looks you know like what I'm to saying? me. Exactly what yeah, I thought. Yeah, you shake his hand and it's like, I'm 12. I, thought I shook his hand and thought, I'm 12. installing signs. Yes, with the his arms. The mega signs with him. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. Not with a crane. No. With just his arms. So anyways, so this guy's out there, so you know I hit him. Yeah, well, yeah. I said, well, hey, man, as you know, we're a church, and we can offer you a tax write-off. Yeah. And so I understand that all these companies have been showing me you making signs for the Dallas Cowboys Stadium and all over the country. I said, well, hey, I'm sure that you have to pay taxes just like That's everybody right. else. We would love to partner with you in that. And you could see him like, you could see him do the like, I hate I hate this man right and now. And so then I did what I always do. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, him. he's just got to try anywhere that we are. He's always just going to throw it out there. Dude, those like a joke. Be, to like just even, you know, soften it. They were nice. They were yeah, nice. And they he said, said he would think and, about and it. And I said, I said, so talk to the powers that be. And our sales guy said, he's he the, is po the power. <laughs> he's the power. I said, well, hey, man, talk to your brother. What's up? Let's do the thing. And then he said they did a donation years ago, but it was a train wreck. And I said, well, I'm not a train wreck. That's true. And then we walked out of the building and I said, favor. <laughs> Dear Lord. So either, here's the option, either give us some money to buy the sign or pray that we walk in great favor or both. What if we got the, the double down on the sign? We got a donation for it and then we the get tax two signs. Because we, we get really want sign. another sign. We want exactly. a kid sign. We want a sign on the other side of the building. We, you know, what good is it if, yeah, I go to more church. Well, where is that? Well, they don't have a sign. <laughs> you can't find it. You can't find it. It's a big white building off the expressway. <laughs> So we it gotta is, get that it out. is on Google, so that's good. We've had yeah. it on Google since day one. Just that's true. no signage. We're about to get another banner. Don't tell anyone so that we don't get in trouble or for putting banner. a banner up. What but. else? Easton got engaged, painted the building, yeah. getting a sign. Oh, you know what else we did what? last week? We went to the barn. We oh. took our whole staff to the barn. We have 36 acres. That's also for sale. <laughs> I feel like we, and, we're doing a commercial today. You know, what is even happening? Yeah. And so uh, we had to unload all of our Christmas decor. Yeah. We have so much Christmas stuff because it's all the way from when we're in our Matlock building yeah. to the pig. Yeah. Because the first year we were at the pig, we went nuts. Yeah. And we put up so much Christmas. That's right. Because we, we were trying died. to make it not look like a school. So we unloaded all of that into so some much trailers. So that Brady said, you know what? We could be Hobby Lobby. <laughs> yeah. So tonight at 630, we've got volunteers coming and yep. we are setting up. Yep. The beginning stages of Christmas, and so I'm excited about that. So it's gonna be so fun. Yeah, I love Christmas. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Getting to decorate, getting to set it up, and I love that where you get to do it a little early because Thanksgiving falls a little bit early this year. Yeah, like the 23rd or something. Is that right? So it's kind of earlier, so you get to enjoy it longer. It's yeah. my favorite thing. Okay. What else? Any other updates? Um, Any other life, world, situational updates? Things that are happening. What's happening on your phone? I'm getting a bunch of text messages. Whitney is sorry. I apologize. Whitney is texting while. We're, it's not like we have three cameras and lights on us. No, that I know. Be focused for. I'm just like, I'm trying to just respond to them quickly. So do that we need to pause. Do you have an emergency? No, we don't need to pause. Just keep going. Okay. I'm almost done. Well, see, my next sentence is about to be real serious. Okay. Though. Oh, okay. I'm done. I Are you sure? Away. I now have completed it. I'm ready. <sighs> you ready? Yep. Me and Rachel got in a fight yesterday. But your face does not look serious. <laughs> <laughs> like you got we did. A real you ever fight. get in a fight? All the yeah, all the if time. you're a, if you're a viewer, if you ever got in a fight with your spouse, comment in the uh, say comment. We in got to fight. We're gonna fight. You know why? Why? Because I'm stupid. Well, <laughs> at least you can admit it. Yeah, God, <laughs> stupid. I'm stupid. And are so, you gonna tell us what the fight was? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this yeah. is the tug of war. We're transparent, and open, honest, no, hot. Stupid, We're hot. dude. It's stupid. What I'll happened? tell you. Here's the fight of Rachel and I's entire marriage. Okay. I see something that she's doing. 
that I don't like oh. or needs to be different. Okay. And then I say some stuff about it. And then she doesn't like that I'm saying anything about it. And then uh, then that just, that just keeps going. And so she doesn't like it. And then I say more about it. And then she doesn't like it even more. And then I say some even more about it. And then it just turns in chaos. Anybody else? Yeah. Does that, you and Aaron ever been in an argument? Ever? Okay. Yeah. So, Today? so here's what I learned. What'd here's you what learn? I learned. Rachel, at the end of the argument, and it wasn't like that bad, you know. Right. I feel but, like if it wasn't, if it was that bad, you wouldn't be talking about it right no, now. Well, and it came to it. It was quick. Because one of our top listeners to the Tug of More is Rachel Bowers. Yeah, and, so. my, and my mom. <laughs> yeah, and so Rachel's like, mom. I don't know if she understands what we're saying, but, but she's, she's watching. Yeah, she's always watching. And so by the end, it was a fight. It was fast. Yeah. And at the end, I realized, I realized something Rachel said. She said, Tristan, you know, you're so good at seeing what isn't going well. Right. But you are not always as vocal about what's going good. Yep. And husbands, you know, when you're in a fight and then your wife says something and you're like, you you realize that it's all your fault. That like, though your logic started accurately, where the conversation has went is yes. all of your fault. Yes. And so I just stood there and listened to her and she explained what she was really trying to say and how she didn't start it that way. And, all. and I was like, in my head, I'm just like, God, I'm a, such a loser. And I realized uh, that I need to I need to learn some things and I need to teach some things. Yeah. Uh, about how we can just speak life. This is real. Right. About how we just need to speak life. Now, that's a song from back in the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speak life. Speak life to the na -na 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 <laughs> world. I don't remember the words. Speak Who is that? Life. I think it's like... Toby Mac or something. It's like. Oh, it's a Christian song. Oh, yeah. It's a super like. Child of the '90s Christian Speak song. Speak life. So, so here, here, so here's the idea. World or something. I don't remember the words. So I've started uh, after this fight, realizing, and this is not a new thing. This is not like the first time that I've had this <laughs> revelation, and that Rachel has told me, "You always point out what isn't going well, and you need to talk about what is going well." This is not a new thing. This is not a new thing that I do around here either. Are you going to tell about the deep trauma that also I said to you? Oh yeah, Whitney said the most. God. <laughs> you were bringing that up no i will whitney said the um <laughs> have you hardest, ever have, uh, most true echoing statement thought, to me of my whole life okay that's very intense real, and dramatic real. but here's what, okay here's what whitney said because i to me. meant it in all love and all care and all genuine kindness here's what whitney said to me she said trust and power <laughs> she trust said and, trust, trust and wells wells you're not, not in baba <laughs> she said she said, sometimes you have unrealistic expectations for human beings. <laughs> and I, I, I just sat there and I heard it and I was so offended. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew you were right. I knew you were right. <laughs> you were offended. And then I was like, oh, my bad. I didn't mean it that No, I mean, I was, my, <laughs> feeling, my feelings were hurt. Yeah, it hurt your feelings. My because, bad. Because, it, no, not your bad. Well, I know, but. We're, we're wounds from a friend can be trusted. Yes. Un, unrealistic. Expectations. Expectations of human beings. <laughs> right now, we got this guy paying the building. Right. He gave us a quote that is so cheap. I can't even believe it. Right. I don't even know how this guy's making any money to paint. The Maybe building. he's not. We don't know. <laughs> Everybody else has given us quote, quote, quote. This guy comes in. I'll do it for this. And I'm like, this guy's wrong. He's missing right. numbers. But no, he's doing it. But do you know what? It's taken him three weeks. Right. Because it's him and like his son out there. And they got some extension ladders. Right. And they got a sprayer kit that looks like they got it from Home Depot. Yeah. And it's taken him three weeks. And do you know what I think every day when I come here? This fool still here painting the building. <laughs> this fool been here three weeks. Why is he so slow? You know why? Because I have an unrealistic expectation <laughs> of what two human beings can do <laughs> to paint a giant facility. Yeah. Maybe. Unrealistic. That might be why. I don't know. So You're not saying a whole lot. Well, yet. because I'm like, now I feel like okay, Whitney so, is the mean, offensive lady oh, who no. says the mean, offensive words. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. The person who tells you the hard words is your best friend. That's true. I'm a good friend. That's a whole. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> I'm a good friend. That's a whole other episode. The person who tells you the real truth is the one that's actually your friend. Yeah. So, Winnie's told me I have unrealistic expectations of human beings. <laughs> Rachel's telling me, Trustin, you're really good at saying the words that need to get better, but you need to be more intentional about saying 
the areas that are going well. Right. And then God says something to me. Okay. Rachel punches me and then God, he didn't punch me. He started just water torture dripping me. Okay. <laughs> and God says, yeah, and you're not casting any vision to her either. Right. And so it's not just, it's not just, hey, Rachel, you're doing a good job. Right. Instead of it's not just that, it's that I'm saying, hey, this is not going well. But then God says, when's the last time you cast some vision to your wife? Right. I cast vision to the church. Right. I cast vision to the team. I cast vision to the painter. I just went out to the painter. I just was in the parking lot right five minutes before we started and talked about how painting this other thing and doing it up here. And I'm casting vision to this guy. I don't know if he knows English enough to understand everything he I'm this. saying. He got it. But are we casting vision? Are we speaking life? Right. So that's what I want us to talk about. Okay. Because I've got a series of brewing. Yeah. I think it's even maybe January or February. Okay. Yeah. I think that our world has been so full of ugliness and like vitriol. Oh man. That we're just so accustomed to blah. We say the ugliness, but do you know what we need to do? Speak life. Yeah. Life and death is in the power of this tongue in my mouth. Right. The Bible says it can turn a ship. A small rudder can turn a whole ship. It says that a, a that a bit can be in the horse's mouth and turn the whole horse. It says that a spark can light a whole forest on fire. These little things have so much power. And so I want to do a series on it because I want to learn it. Right. Right? But then I feel like if I need to learn it, probably all y'all, probably all y'all be saying stuff to your spouse that's mean. Well, not just to your spouse, to, to your, your kids, your kids. To, saying, your, to your uh, to yourself. When you look in the mirror, we all talk, we're, I talk worse to myself sometimes than I would talk to anybody else. To about, your employees. To your employees, to the people in your life, to your friends. And I think that you're right in the last season, especially, I mean, Tim gave this stat about yesterday about uh, how like the world that we live in has like been overtaken by social media since like 2005. And when you look back over like that season of my life, I'm like, yeah, the worst people have spoken to me has been over the internet. They've gotten bold, like in the internet, oh. people can just type whatever they want, yeah. say whatever they want, send you the rudest messages via text message via the internet. Over the last however many 15 years, I'm like, yeah, the world we live in, I saw somebody, I was trying to remember what it was, but I saw something yesterday. Someone posted just something simple on Facebook, like an idea and a thought, a question on Mansfield Moms, that's what it was, asking about, hey, I'm looking for childcare for my kid. I don't really know the amount to pay um, and I'm trying to figure out the hours, but if anyone is interested, and these people start ripping this lady up, how dare you ask for childcare without giving the amount that you are gonna pay them that's so disrespectful. And I'm like, no, this lady said she doesn't know yeah. how much she should pay. She's asking for help and you're ripping her up because she didn't post a post perfectly. It was crazy, but I thought exactly that. People just coming in hot. People are just mad Why? everywhere, saying I, everything, I, I trying to tell that, everybody they're stupid. I see that uh, that in Mansfield, I'm on a bunch of the you know yes. pages, and people will post about like a new restaurant coming into town. Oh, yeah. And you'd have thought that they said, we're bringing in Genghis Khan and his conquerors, <laughs> and we're going to kill half the people here. The way that people are like, I can't believe that restaurant is so disgusting. Back in 1993, I found a hair on my burrito. Oh, and man. I, and like so much like negativity. Yeah. And I think that we're wired to see the problems, and we're wired to, to bring them up. Well, the world we live in now, we have so much information at our disposal. We have so much vision at our disposal we have so much opportunity at our disposal that we can now I mean, my feet is full of people go everybody it feels like everybody went to italy this summer for vacation right so now what i once had and thought was wonderful oh, yeah. sucks compared yeah. to and so like because of all this input i think content everything that we're receiving right now you're receiving more content it, it, it's kind of tainted us yeah. to not be able to appreciate what's right in front of us and to see the good, mm -hmm. but to s instead see the lack. And then, yeah, when your personality is already tugging into, tugging more. into more, then you always see the space between where you are mm. and where you want to be. You see that space. And the only solution in most of our minds to get there is to point that out, call that out, and then jump over into yeah. the next thing. But I think what you're talking about is even so much more intentional that it's one thing to have high expectations for myself. I always have 
I always say I'm not competitive, but I'm self-competitive because right. I have very high expectations for myself. You can do better. I can do better. I yeah. should do better. I can't believe I'm still here. All these things. But it's when we put those expectations on other people that, yeah, I mean, they maybe they didn't even ask for those yeah. expectations, but they're like, I don't, I'm good. I'm, yeah. Leave me alone. That uh, it, it comes from the right heart. We want everyone to be able to to be the best that they can be. Yeah. But what our words say instead, yeah, is death instead of life. And man, it sucks to admit that. It's hard. Yeah. I, I went to a podcast recording for Pastor Jensen Franklin. Mm -hmm. And they give you an opportunity to ask questions at the end. And I stood up and was one of only two people that ask was willing question. to ask a question. Yeah. And I asked him how he encouraged his church and like how he spoke life into it because it's something that I, I, I struggle with. Do we, are we talking like, why do you struggle with it? I don't know what we're talking. I, I struggle with it. I think it's not my tenor, you know, tenor is like, um, the, 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 the personality of the room. So like, if you walk into the lobby at more church, the tenor is, Hey, how are you? Welcome. That's the tenor. You walk into a funeral home and the tenor is, right. so it's kind of down. Yeah. It's not the tenor of my life. Maybe it's the tenor of my mind or something. Is hmm. fix it, better it, mm -hmm. advance it, solve it. That's how I, it's how I walk around. You guys are getting a real unique episode here because it's it's really just yeah. talking to my friend like, yeah. I, I walk around like with yeah. those things as my references of like, how can I better the things that are around right. me? And that's a gift. I think it's, it's I hope a, that everything that touches me gets better when it walks away. Right. But that can also be a beat down. It's a gift and a curse. I've talked to you about it a bunch, like with my kids. Yeah. I was such a uh, fix it, solve it mom. And then I wanted to fix it, solve it for them. Like I wanted them to be the best kids that they could be. I wanted them to grow in, up and not be losers and scrubs. I didn't want them right. to go to jail. And I also didn't want them to like suffer some of the same mistakes I made. And as a mom, when they would come to me with issues, problems, or even just smart aleck comments, I would always come back to them with uh -huh. the solve the solution. Oh yeah, well you didn't. Oh yeah, well you should have. Oh yeah, well here's this. They got a friend that did them wrong or whatever. Well, what you need to think is, or what you need to realize about yes. them is all of these things every time. And finally one day McKinley said to me, mom, it's really hard to have a conversation with you because I just need you to hear me. Right. I just need you to hear what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> I want you to hear how I feel. I want you to hear that my feelings are hurt or like, I just want to be able to be a kid who is coming to my mom for comfort, not for fixing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, frick. Because the truth of the matter is, now they're in the season of their life that they're growing up. They're about to move out. They're about to be on their own. And I had to think about it long and hard, even in my own life with people and relationships I have, like I don't have to talk to those people, so I don't. Well, once they move out of my house, they don't have to talk to me anymore mm -hmm. if they don't want to. Well, do I want them to? Mm -hmm. And so I better be a place for them to be able to safely land. And then, doesn't mean never, bring critique or bring mm -hmm. the solve or bring the solution, but I have to change my my timeline. I have to change my outline really, I guess, the way my brain thinks is very like uh, strategic. Yeah. And so, okay, checkbox first is, have I made them feel heard? Have I made them feel comforted? Have I allowed them to really say all that they wanna say and given them the grace and the space to, to just feel how they feel and say what they want. And then we can talk about, okay, would you like some solutions? Would right. you like me to give some input? Would you like me? But, but I was just only ever giving that solve, giving that solution. And what I realized was I am shutting down this relationship. I'm trying mm -hmm. to help this relationship. I'm trying to better this relationship. I'm trying to better their life. And like, I want a good, happy family and a home and all these things. And so what I'm trying to do is take away any negativity, take away any bitterness, any frustration, any hurt, whatever it was that they were dealing with and replace it with truth and love. Here you go, here's some truth and love. And they were like, no, 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 I just need some grace and peace and comfort for mm -hmm. a minute, and then we can get to the truth and love. And mm -hmm. it was hard. It was a hard switch for me. And like, we still talk about it. I still have to say to them sometimes, like, hey, I'm not that same mom, remember? And it was inten like intentional. I've talked to you about it before. Mm -hmm. Like, I had to right. 
decide it before I decided it. Yeah. I had to decide, I had to literally be sitting there listening to McKinley tell me about a friend or like mm -hmm. some drama and tell myself, look her in the eyeballs. Yeah. Listen to what she's saying. And shut up. Say, I'm so sorry that happened. Right. And then be quiet and give her more space to talk. And don't give tips. Don't. Or, or don't go, well, you know what I bet they meant was, because I'm just trying to soften the blow. Oh, you know what I bet? Well, did you ask this? Or right. what had you handled it? No, no, no. Shut your mouth. Listen, it was hard. And it's still hard. There's still times right. that it's hard. Getting ready for this uh, engagement this weekend. McKinley and, her, and one of her friends, they were like really putting it on. I was there helping and doing. And in my mind, I'm like, I know how to do this faster and more efficiently and how to get it. But I was, I had to give the space to let them be creative and do it and learn and ask for help. Man, it was not easy. We still got it done in great time. We still had fun. And I was not as crazy as I could have normally been. Uh, but man, letting them learn it on their own, mm -hmm. it's because I just wanted the control to help. I can help. I can help. But our help can hurt if we're not careful. Yeah. That's a lot of words. No, it's great. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy, I think to let out what isn't right or to let out what should be should or the salt we're should've. we're pointing out the problem sorry Go or ahead. we're we're giving the steps no right and i think that sometimes that's just not there should be other tools in our toolbox correct and i feel like from what you told me yeah. from what rachel told me and from what god started dripping into me i was yeah. like dude, I need to get some better tools because yeah. I feel a little bit ill-equipped Yeah, like as a human to do a yeah. good job at that. We had a men's conference a couple weeks ago and I was doing the closing session. Uh -huh. And uh, dude, I can say so much stuff to men and I wrote multiple things to say. Right. But they were none of them were right. And you know what they all were? A balled up fist. Hmm. All of them. Because that day we had talked about pornography or, you know, lust stuff. We had talked about like transparency we had talked about getting community around we had talked about all these things and you know what they all have lists of what not to do and list of what to do and i felt like you know what these guys need to do is they just need to hear good job hmm, right and so i wrote a very um unnatural feeling hmm. landing right that i'm not even sure it felt genuine from me right because it just felt so mm. unnatural for me to stand up for 20 minutes and just say, good job. You, I'm glad you're here. You're right. doing a good job. God's proud of you. I'm proud of you. And as it's all coming out of me, it just feels like. You just said a great thing. though. Not natural. Not natural, not genuine. And like some places I'm great at it. Yeah. But where I see need for improvement, it's like my brain is like, must say truth give input for growth yeah and it's like i i can't just shut up and just yeah yeah no it's it's so true and what you're saying is real the genuineness of i think that's the other so we're talking about the world we live in like it's full of critique it's full of people being ticked off and triggered and all things but also the world we live in now i think can better tell someone's genuine genuineness more than they ever could before huh, yeah. and it's what they're craving in the authentic authenticity of life that you and i grew up in a very like um the i think also the homes, the churches, the environments, the the schools, the the people around us that you and I both grew up in were very list oriented, yeah. goal oriented strategy. And that's part of what made the makeup of who we are as people. And I think that nowadays, what what we've noticed with preachers, other preachers, what we've noticed with other leaders, what we've noticed, people nowadays, they're just looking for someone who's genuine. Are you gonna be genuine? We, we came from, oh, they have to have, seven steps to be the greatest right, leader right, of right. America or whatever. Yeah. That's not what they're looking for anymore because we've all been. John Maxwell's 21 in irrefutable <laughs> laws of leadership. Right. Like, if I can do these 21 things, I will I'm be a amazing. Right. And instead the, the next generation and the world that we're in is just looking for someone who's genuine that they can follow and can be encouraged by. And that, that I really do believe is a next level step of leadership of being able to go, okay, I know it's not where it needs to be, but how can I instead give encouragement 
to to that. You know, I remember years ago, we say it every time, actually, we've done lots of marriage series together. And we've talked about how a lot of women will speak down at their husband. Why don't you ever mm -hmm. take the trash out? Why are you not ever being who I need? But if we would speak instead encouragement, say thank you more, that that would really be the thing that will help their in their marriage step into all all the more that that they are hoping for. But it it feels small and simple when it comes to little things like that, but it's really everything yeah. in our life. And we, we just don't realize, I think, the value of being able to encourage and being able to make people feel loved, seen, heard. Um, and I don't, I don't know. It's, it's so much, but it's so important to be able to realize, okay, how then do I now make that? You said the word tenor, and I'm like, the tenor of my life that I would yeah. become an encourager. Yeah. I had a uh, coffee last week with a lady who I, I told her your spiritual gift is encouragement. Yeah. You, you and I don't have very many one-on-one -on -one conversations. We don't actually know that much about each other. Yeah. Um, but you've just encouraged me in the last hour more than I've really probably felt encouraged in the last year. And it was just oozed out of her. She didn't try. She wasn't overly trying. It was just a Right. part of the tenor yeah. of who she was mm -hmm. and the way she asked me questions about myself the way she was listening to me i i really couldn't even put my finger on how you felt in her presence yes right and i let and you know what she probably didn't do give you any bullet points none right and you know what's true she didn't really give me any bullet points about what i could do better or what I was doing awesome. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't any list at all. It was her presence that made me just feel mm -hmm. so encouraged and and so genuinely like, oh, you liked being with me. Oh, okay, maybe I'm awesome. Okay, and what, what's true is I felt more awesome, like I could go accomplish my day better uh, than if I would have gotten a list about, because dang it, I right. mean, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, I've had lots of coffee meetings where people slide a list across the table and tell me what we're not doing well. Yeah, yeah. And I already, I already know it. That's the other part. Yeah. I mean, when we are telling people where they're not measuring up, they probably already know most of it. And then we're and just, so do you know why we're saying it to make ourselves feel better? Right. That we got it off our chest. Right. And into their head, but all it does is create insecurity. Yeah. And all it does is make people feel like they're not enough. Yeah. And so, like. You know, I think in steps, I think in bullet points. So, okay, we've identified the problem so f thus far. Right. But what what then should we be speaking towards? Hmm. It's encouragement of like, good job. I see you, I believe in you, you're doing well. Yeah. But then there's also speaking life is, I believe, more more is a very difficult word because it in itself implies challenge right because more is beyond mm -hmm. and to get beyond is a task but do you think there's a genuine fear that if we don't give um the pressure in places that there will be like there's a genuine, I'm asking it, but I know Lacks I know the answer. Lackadaisical. There will be that rather than, um, cause I'm now thinking back on that lunch even more than I had put in my processes before. It really made me feel like I've been open, especially open with you about the last year of my like, man, this is hard. And oh man, is the enemy trying to get me to quit? What is going on in my life? Like it feels heavy. My, my feet feel a little bit like, do they have concrete in them? I left that feeling more excited to do more in my ministry life, everything than I had in a long time because I simply felt like, oh, oh, I'm already cool where I am. There's more I can do, let's keep going. Right. And I'm like, is it that we're so afraid that people will stop and be stuck and that we don't trust that they have a process too, that they mm -hmm. are going through their own process and that God actually is in control of their life and mm -hmm. not us, that is yeah. like, there's a there's a impatience. Yeah. There's a lack of trust. Yeah. And there's a selfishness. Okay. That's and that's super Probably. Like, no, that's super vulnerable and real and I would agree with you 100% because I'm thinking about 
we're using marriage as an example, but I'm yeah. like the times that I've wished, I wish my husband was like a guy who would just take me on these romantic dates and do all these things or have a big elaborate gift for me and blah, blah. And I would get so like bent out of shape about it that I would just be annoyed and bugged. Whereas when instead I just was like, hey, thank you that you make my coffee. Thank you that you do. Right. And I just pointed out little things. And this last year, my husband took me on a trip and surprised me. That's like out of character for who he normally is. That's a small thing. But I'm like, huh, I stopped focusing on this thing I wish you would be and do. And, and then suddenly you grew into that. Whereas I was just encouraging and thank you for these small things. Yeah. And it's because I'm not trusting that you have your own relationship with God, that you have your own process as a man. God's that, speaking to you. The Holy Spirit's up to some stuff in you. Right. I'm over here trying to strong arm you. Yeah. Into it, more. Which is probably actually Slowing. hindering your growth. But if I would just look at and point out, speak life into the things you're doing well. Yeah. Did we do an episode on um, leadership presence? Yeah. Yeah. It's that. Oh, it's that, but to a new a new degree, a next to, degree. Yeah, to like, so leadership presence, we, had, we gave some examples about yeah. like when we were back at the pig, if the LED wall wouldn't work or something wasn't going well, and I'm standing there in the front row, Bad. and I'm just looking all intense. No, I'm not mad. I just naturally, that's how I look. I just walk around looking kind of intense. Yeah. Then everybody feels that tension. Right. My intensity brings tension. Yeah. And I think that it's the same thing when it comes into all of our other relationships out of the words that come out of our mouth that like they're loving. Yeah. Like uh, we took a while in staff meeting where we said we're not going to critique anymore, mm -hmm. where we stopped at all critiquing. Right. And all we did was celebrate yeah. because but I was able to do it there. Well, and what's true there. So if we take that and apply it. Now we still had hurdles, we still had problems, whatever. Yeah. But our team didn't slack. No. They didn't stop. Right. In fact, they had life enough to keep going and to actually creatively come up with some of their own ways right. to make it better in that season. Yeah. And I think they're right. I, I feel like it's a fear. Some of it is probably trauma-based in the like childhood traumas and then young adult traumas of life of like leaders we had or people that we were encountering that made me feel like I didn't measure up probably that then made me then be more self competitive in my own self that then now I'm transferring that onto somebody else as we're talking about it, I'm like yeah I can see that because because I didn't feel like I was measuring up to other people's expectations and I didn't feel like, I felt like they were always giving me a list of things that I should do better. And so then now in myself, I have found a list of things that I should do better. And now I'm transferring it because I want them, especially, I mean, I've said to my kids, but for real, that was a real struggle for me that I had to realize like, hey, what if you tried it different? What right. if you told him some good job. I remember for Easton, like he's, he externally looks chill, but internally can be like having a panic attack. And like, I remember times in life when he was a kid that he would be like, mom, I'm ar I already feel like a loser. I don't need you to tell me like how to do my homework better or how to get my schedule in line. Like, I already feel like I'm out of whack. Just, just tell me how I can, just tell me I'm doing good somewhere, point out somewhere. And I'm like, dang it if we could really get that, but you said it, trust and selfishness are probably the two right. like, yeah, because I can't really trust. I had a hard time trusting, let me say it like that, that it would all be okay, that it would all work out okay. And then my selfishness for, man, I'm, a, I'm gonna feel guilty if I didn't help. We're wanting to build them up, but we're actually beating them down. Correct. And I'm not going to get them where I want them to be. And I'm not going to look like the right mom. I'm not going to have the, I'm not going to have the relationship I want. I'm not going to have right. the everything, whatever the question is. But we do it because we're trying to get to more. But instead, yeah, we're, we're so how we're do you build back. up without beating down? You speak life, right? I don't know what the series is going to be called because yeah. it can't be speak life because that's a 90s song <laughs> and like an abortion slogan or something. Somebody said it sounded like, yeah, some, one of our teams said it sounded like pro-life or like pro-choice kind of thing. I don't, that probably wouldn't work. But don't beat them down. Build them up through. Encouragement. But like, but. What? But encouragement. No, is, we, it, we is, underestimate what encouragement does. Right. But what is it and how do you give it? Maybe it's because I didn't, 
I don't know. Yeah. If you don't receive it, you Correct. don't know how to give it yeah. all away. No, it's and real. And so I feel like yeah. the I have a great vocabulary. But when it comes to encouragement, I've got good job. But it's also the And art. like then I'm out of I'm out of like words like but it's also good job the, at this and we've said it before, the measuring stick or the like um the what is the word we used? Uh we have to change the uh yeah, we have to change like what's a win in life sometimes. Yeah. And I think sometimes we get so set on the vision, the focus, the idea of where we're going. You and I just today went and looked at the sign. We talked about it. Yeah. And then we realized, oh, holy crap, it costs a lot of money. We're going to figure it out. Then we just had our team make a banner temporarily to put up. And so Easton's like going to get it ordered, all the things. You yeah. and I walking back in from talking to the payers said what to each other? Huh, maybe we're not actually going to want the sign that we thought we were going to want just the, because after all. of the banner design. Sometimes I think our our benchmark, our goal for other people especially is what we think that it should be. Who we think they should be. What we think their best is. And the problem is we don't actually know. So what you're telling me <laughs> is that maybe I'm not the only one with unrealistic expectations <laughs> for human beings. No, maybe yeah. we all have... But but also like we get short sighted. We our verse as a church, it, it's been wrecking me lately as I realize that to him who is able yeah. to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we ask, think, or imagine. If we can think it or imagine it, then it's probably not the thing that mm -hmm. he has for us. Right. It's probably something beyond. Now to you and I, that is a numerical growth. That is a bigger vision growth. That is a. Mm -hmm. But beyond is actually maybe just something over here out of left field. Well, this is right, but whatever. Right field that we didn't actually ever imagine. And the problem is... Something unquantifiable. I did not envision for my children who they've grown up to be. That's not who I saw them mm. being. I saw them being different people. Equally as wonderful, but different. But actually... This is more. They're ex Yeah, I'm like I'll cry now. They're yeah. exceedingly, abundantly beyond. Yeah. My son getting engaged, I've said it, like who he's getting married to. If I would have written out the wife for him, she would not have been as wonderful. Yeah. And so like we screw up in our speaking truth in love to try to help mold people into who they are. And actually we're chiseling away the pieces that God is actually molding in them into his beyondness because we're not, <laughs> we're not just shut up. We just need to shut up and just speak. I love that, whatever, that bend, that mold, that shape. Mm. I love that piece of you and just speak to what we love instead of looking for, well, have they measured up to this? Have they gotten here yet? Mm -hmm. But, oh man, I love this. You, you know, your kids draw you a picture and it's not ever good when they're seven. Right. But we but, tell them how beautiful it is, well, right? Because we know they love us. Yes. You, you said a word in there that needs to be pulled out. Let's say. Chisel. Yeah. And so I think that that's, I, you know, I have, I don't, I don't have a hundred, but I have a lot of hammers in my office. You do, sir. For a lot of reasons. Yep. And the way that things are meant, one of the ways that things are created is through chiseling. You start with a right block of material. This is all the way from stone where you would actually chisel to aluminum that you would mill Oh, that's one way is you chisel it away. But then there's another form of construction that is you add material. This is what all of these, um, what's it called when they print um, three-dimensional printing? What's it called? Three. That's what it's 3D, called. 3D printing. 3D printing, yeah. 3D printing is you you add material right. to something that's non-existent and yeah. then it forms the thing. And I think that that's my problem. Yeah. I think that I live with a hammer and chisel yeah. You just need a lump of clay not, or no, whatever. No, to I need add so clay. those those way the way that those things work that that three D printers is they have like a big reel of it looks like fishing wire or whatever yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, yeah. And it, it just it just feeds it and it heats it and it melts it and it puts it in a position. Yeah. And like there's this there's this um plethora of material that it's able to add. Correct. And like, what if the way that you're trying to build your kids or your business or your marriage, right? instead of chiseling off 
Right. You just need to add on to. Right. No, it's so good. Add on to it. Correct. Don't just break pieces off. Yes, and. And like the whole thing Rachel's saying to me. Yeah. Is trusting. You just keep chiseling me, man. Yeah. You just keep breaking these things off instead of telling me where I'm winning. Right. Well, and the truth is, as. I just, if you're listening, I just, I just physically fell yeah. down and died yeah he used to say you got me you got me you got me but now he just has an action for you got me <laughs> I just uh, got got. <laughs> um and the truth is hmm. we said at the top the world we live in the 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 culture we are a part of already is giving us feedback and input mostly negative mm -hmm. all the time and if we're the ones closest to people loving people leading people uh married to people connecting to people and we're giving the same noise as the rest of the world Right. then all we do is sound like noise anyway. And so mm -hmm. if we can change our tenor and we can, the reason that that lunch was so, or whatever coffee it was, whatever, uh, was so impactful to my life is because it was so opposite of every other meeting I've had lately. Mm -hmm. The reason it did so much for me differently was because- you just got a good job. All I, all I heard her say was encouraging kind things that I was like, Oh, really? Oh, and just she even noticed things that I didn't even notice about myself that were encouraging and positive that made me feel like, thanks. You know, the last three meetings I have have just been people telling me things I already knew about myself <laughs> that I wasn't doing well. Thank you for hmm. you. You were uh, the opposite. You were the fish swimming upstream kind of thing that that made me like, wait. And so it so stuck out to me because it was different. And so what if we were different? Mm. What if our words were different? What if our actions of encouragement were different than what we've done? And I think that's, yeah, it's challenging even now in the season to realize, okay, there's more. Uh, and the truth is, bro, once you get that, then you'll just start being that guy. Then you can be the more encouraging guy. Y you know, like mm. then the moreness, if we can look at it with what can I add to in a day, uh, rather than what can I solve in a day? I think that that can become, man. And mm -hmm. it's uh, what is the word? Uh, what is it? Contagious. It's contagious. Yeah. Cause that's, what's going to catch yeah. around you and to the team around you and to the people around you, to mm -hmm. your home. And then what if we just become those? We do it right now. It's about to be Thanksgiving. Yeah. We do that. We're like, oh, let's in, let's be thankful, gratitude. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Yeah. I don't know. I'm what? in my. I'm oh, deep. I oh, I know you are. I'm deep, <laughs> I can in, I'm see deep it. in my head now. It's really good. It's yeah. a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah, for sure. And so, um, so I'm gonna start working on it. Yeah. It's a conversation that needs to be had. It's a uh, it's a teaching that we need to get that we're not just building through subtraction, but we're building through addition that yeah. we're encouraging and we're adding on to people and we're yeah. talking about what they are and yeah. we're talking about what they can be and we're seeing the gifts that are there and yeah. we're not just talking about how they could fix it and get better. Well, it's also, it's also based in another piece of it that we haven't said. It's also based in what we've seen before, mm -hmm. what we've seen other people walk through and, yeah. and, and it's not just selfish, it's also unselfish in that we want them to not have to walk through either what we've walked through or what we've seen other people walk through. But when we can identify that there is a new path, that there's a path that's totally different than any path we've ever seen before, uh, then it's kind of challenging and exciting to mm -hmm. try something new. So that's Great. good. It's really good. It's really good. So here's what we need some help with. <laughs> How do you do it? Right. How do you encourage have you received encouragement? Have you been built up? Or did you grow up in a home where you were only told what you weren't doing? How do right. we how do we self-adjust at 41 year old man? Right. How do I adjust to become a better builder up through mm. encouragement? Through speaking towards where they can be, towards a vision of what they could accomplish without the list of what somebody needs to change. Because I think it even would affect my preaching. 1,000%. I think it would influence my preaching. It that my also preaching... makes sense why you always say that. Because I speak also um, strongly, but I think that the, the uh, 
the background track for you has been because you keep saying I don't want to be so heavy I don't want to be so heavy yeah. I want to encourage and I'm like it doesn't sound that way but I bet it's the background track in your own head is like I, I'm saying this because I want them to get to hear but realizing that like if you can speak encouragement and that will help right. you feel sorry I, I recently no I thoughts. recently I recently had a meeting with a guy who screwed up his life really bad yeah 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 affairs Situ I don't need to get in the details, but like, oh, they need to make a movie about this dude. And like, right. you did this with what you like messed his whole life up. And I'm in a meeting with, or I'm in a counseling session with him. Yeah. He's telling me, and he's already so broken. Right. And he's already in the full consequence of I'm an idiot. And I'm sitting there kind of going like, I don't even know what to say because he's already, hmm. he's fully exposed right. me telling him well, yeah. yeah man you need to change this and this and here's the five steps to the success it's not really going to do anything and i was kind of at a little bit of a loss because no you told me that after you said there's i really didn't say much to him because all i could do was encourage and pray for him because he already basically was right. at rock bottom but that's what you're saying if a person's already self-aware if they already know easton already knew he was stressing out in his math yeah. class or whatever yeah but but the problem is we only see it in those extremes. Right. What we need to do is identify that we don't know what anyone, even our own spouses, our own kids, we don't actually know their whole yeah. internal tr dialogue. And if we could really recognize that all people are is walking around feeling like, oh, I've already screwed this up, but instead give mm -hmm. encouragement in life instead of the other, it, it would change a lot of things. It would change. And then the Golly. idea of what do I wish... I had received, my counselor says something to me years ago about that, that really wrecked me that like, mm -hmm. we try to give to the world what we didn't have. That's like part of our internal like thing. So whatever we didn't receive or whatever we didn't have, we try to put back into the world. And when I can recognize, oh, I'm, what I didn't have was some, you know, like a, a solid foundation to then jump my life off of. So what I'm trying to create for my kids in my home is a stable, firm foundation, but I'm going about it the wrong way. Right. And like we can, if we can identify, oh, but also what I wish I would have had was more encouragement, more you got this, more yeah. you can do this. Oh yeah. And then I can then go, oh yeah, well then I'm going to now make it my mission to put that back into the world. Yeah. It's really important. It's super good conversation. So tell us, tell us what we need to learn. Yep. How do we, how have you adjusted this? What are some, um, some thoughts that you've got a Bible story, a book, a message, something that is kind of in this vein. And then I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start digesting content to help our world right? The ethos that we the, live in and lead in yeah, to help change the tenor of our words. It's really good. Because man, our world needs it. Yeah. Christians need a shift. The election's coming. Right. How do we shift the, the tenor of our personhood that isn't just well, you know, attacking so and much. there's so much. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's there's just so much. But I'm just like, you know, the reason Rachel and I have a very unique. Some of these podcasts be going three hours. Yeah, I'm like, dang it. But the reason Rachel and I have the dynamic we have uh, in like you and I working together, men and women in ministry, like uh, all of those pieces is because we decided a long time ago to just be each other's loudest cheerleader. So uh -huh. we decided. And so when I think about that, that we've been able to drastically shift a culture that in this place before you were the leader was not only opposing of women in leadership was afraid of it to now what we have instead um here where women and men worked side by side all the yeah. time leading together encouraging one another the way we shifted that whole culture was by being cheerleaders yeah encouragers mm -hmm. champions and i'm like oh when i can put that cheerleader on it then that when I realized that is what changed a whole culture from negative to positive, then I can apply that other places. Oh, okay. Then that, that's so good. You just gave me a, a visual that like, we can't only be the coach, right? We have to also be the cheerleader. Yeah. It's really important. And like, there's, we have to take the headset off and the, put the clipboard down and get the whistle off around our neck Yeah, and pick some pom poms up, man, and start doing some cheers. Well, you know, That's so no, much. it's so it's much, so but much. I'm thinking about the Rangers when they just won. I told you about it. They do like a champagne. What's it called? Toast. Is that what it is? Champagne toast afterward. 
And it's literally just champagne and beer that they're just spraying all over the locker room. They've got it like taped down, all the things. And it lasted 35 minutes. It lasted so long. And I was like, you know, all of it. This is so wasteful. And oh my God, they cost so much money, blah, 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 blah. But I'm like, well, yeah, they had to redirect and coach them all throughout the game, Mm -hmm. all throughout the season, all throughout the year. And when you think about how many minute moments they're actually coaching certain individual players, whatever, but it was every coach, every player, every person for this. Yeah, we better be cheerleading that long. Yeah, but yeah, but I want to push on it because that's my problem. When I win that, when I win, then I can cheer. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me give you this. Okay. When I I'll win, push back. Let me push when back. I, when I, I'm not pushing no, back. No, I know you're not. I know you're not. I know like, you're not. When I win, when you win, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're finished. <laughs> I know. But, when you're fully finished but, being perfect, prove me, tell, then I can win. That's that's not, that's never. Okay, but true or no? Am I correct or no? They do it at every level. I would say F1, all three of them get champagne. Uh, yeah, but, I, oh, all the winners. But I'm talking about in the World Series. Are you saying all the winners? Oh no, I'm talking about World Series. Every level, American League, all of those things. Oh, that's good. They do it okay. at all of those. So it's so not at just mile markers, at mile markers. So at mile markers, a big celebration is needed. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's well, important. And and they're probably saying good, yes, bad, high five. hundred percent. But after like, every I game. think I think that a part of my problem yes, is, I know. is that I'm gonna really celebrate yeah. the church when it's done. Right. But it's never done. No, right. Because there's more. Right. This is the struggle of the tug of more is that it's never done. Oh, correct. You and I got inattention on the first day in this new building. And the problem was simply that you knew there was more that could be better. And I also knew there was, but was like, I just need to celebrate for a second because, because we've been in such a fight and there was this tension between us. It wasn't bad, whatever. We were fine. It was no big deal. But not fight, fight, fight against the hardships. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. hardship of the of the of the season of setup and teardown and a hundred years in the pig and all yeah. those things, and and the tension of that is we have to find the time to celebrate so that we can keep tugging into more. Mm-hmm. We have to find both, and and what happens is we give the balance. We've talked about it for years, but this is a whole nother level. This is a whole nother Mm -hmm. deeper level of realizing the daily conversationally. I mean, we do it in the love sandwich. It's all of that, Mm -hmm. but it has to become genuine. And I think that's the, the reason you're struggling with it is because of who you are in the season of life that you've been in and the Mm -hmm. completeness of what God's doing Mm -hmm. in your life. And it's going, okay, now the next part of wholeness as an individual is to take that and then to make it a genuine piece of me to be a encourager, to be a champion of people and to let go of some of the old ways of doing it and shift into a new, a new era. I want it to become natural. Yeah. Yeah. And it just isn't, it still feels clunky and awkward. Yeah. Kyle, my buddy workout that buddy. I work out, work yeah. out in the mornings with, he's he had been having me do burpees. Mm-hmm. You know, burpee, it's the simplest exercise, but it's horribly painful. All you do is <laughs> lay on the ground and then stand up and jump. Right. That's all that it is. <laughs> but you do a hundred of those. Right. And it's hell on earth. Yeah. And I've hated doing it. But today, Kyle says, hey, you're, you're actually in, Just doing in it. a rhythm. Right. Look at your flexibility, your mobility. Look yeah. at your speed. Look yeah. at your, dude, you just did this many this time. And it's taken me six months. Yeah. And like, I think that that's what you're saying, that it's just going to take some intentionality and some time for this new vernacular yeah. to start to arise. And I'm committed yeah. to it. Yeah. I'm committed to it. Yeah. Because I don't want to just be a chiseler. Right. I don't want to just keep chiseling stuff. Well, because eventually the truth of the matter is eventually you chisel it all away. And That's, whether it's yeah. chiseling the relationship away, you might have got a perfect piece, but you how much did you of the relationship did you chisel away before you got to the yeah. perfect piece? Like it's yeah. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Now, now he's getting all serious. But That's it's true. Good. It's super good. Okay, y'all. Well, clearly that'll be a series because we have lots to say about it. Lots but. to say. Series coming. I don't know. Give us some ideas, some additions, whatever yes. you got. 
Thanksgiving's around the corner. Hey, can I tell you something? Yeah. You did a really good job with this podcast. I oh, think we you. did a really good job. Thank you. I'm encouraging also, but... Yeah. but See how I'm ready to end it, close it down without <laughs> saying we did a good job. Okay, we didn't going. even... I didn't even know what we were talking about when we started, which is not normally how I like least need to know some of it. And no, so like, well, we did a good job. What happens is, is we'll have an episode and then we'll sit here and talk about it for a few minutes. Yeah. And I feel like... We lose some of the sparkle of it. Yeah. And That's we get into our heads yep. a little bit of like, oh, we got to hit that point. Oh, don't forget to say that. Yeah. And then instead of me listening, right, I watch all the episodes back. And you know what I learned is that sometimes Whitney's talking, I'm looking at her, but I'm not paying nothing attention to what she's yeah, saying. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm trying to think about what, what am to, I going to say next? What am I going to say next? Yeah. But that's because I have a predetermined destination bullet point a list agenda yeah. that i want to make sure i'm getting to yeah and so i thought it was just natural okay it was very good love y'all cool love you Let guys know. Hope you like share it. happy thanksgiving or if it's after thanksgiving i don't, I don't know, know when that. we're posting this all right happy I hope you new like year the building Merry Christmas. if you don't no, 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 no. please don't tell us oh, just get, tell us it looks good yeah, that's what we good. need please encourage us. us all right see you guys <laughs> bye